Praise the Lord, everyone. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. As the Scripture said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, the Scripture says, let us enter in his gates with thanksgiving, and enter in his courts with praise. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you uh, that are tuning in with us on today. And we thank God that uh, he is the lifter of our soul. And we uh, bless him for a great day. This is a great day. Uh, the scripture always comes to my mind that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And I um, want to go before the Lord in prayer as we remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. I uh, want to also pray uh, for uh, people across the world that are losing loved ones and are suffering financially and spiritually and, and physically through these uh, times that we're going on. And we also too want to pray for those that are standing strong, that are being encouraged, that are in encouraging themselves in the Lord. I also want to pray for them that they'll continue to be strong uh, in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, remember all the pastors and uh, all the leaders that are uh, keeping their church doors open in the sense of uh, providing these virtual services and things such as that. And we certainly do uh, also want to pray for uh, the parishioners that support uh, their churches through their love giving and also through uh, various means of support of encouraging uh, other members that are connected to that particular assembly. Uh, no man is an island and we uh, need one another. I often tell the saints here at Christian Ministries that I need you and you need me and we need each other. So let us do our part. Let us do our part. Every part of the body has a purpose and a function uh, so let everyone uh, not be isolated and withdrawn, but carry out their function, which God has given them, using their gifts and their talents to help promote uh, their fellow man and to promote the kingdom of God. So we want to uh, certainly also pray for our Bible study on tonight. I'm excited and encouraged about the word of God on tonight. Uh, I'm always encouraged about and excited about God's word. But uh, it, it just means something. Uh, I, I count it an honor and a privilege uh, to be able to stand before you in any way, in any purpose, in any, in any, uh, by any means uh, to go over the word of God because it's our lifeline, it's our strength, and it's our shield. And I just um, am humbled by the opportunity that you would allow me to come to you with the word so pray that God will grant unto thy, his servant the door of utterance, amen, uh, and that make all points clear on tonight, and that I pray that you also receive with meekness, as the scripture says, the engrafted word of God so that you can grow thereby. And that's the purpose. That's the purpose of the word of God. Uh, that's the reason why God gives us gifts and assignments, and he gives other people gifts and assignments so that we can help each other grow, so that we can mature in the Lord. It's all about maturing, it's all about growing. Um, if, if a mother and a father gave birth to a baby, uh, they don't want to see the baby still a baby nine months later, I mean, I'm sorry, nine years later, still, still an infant. Uh, nine years later, still an infant. They wanna see the child grow and progress and go through the various stages of, of toddlership and um, adolescence and all throughout those other stages of life all the way to adulthood. And that's the same way with God with us. He wants to see us mature, matriculate, and to grow into adults. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, uh, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to grow and to mature. So let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to stand before this great congregation. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. 
We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul under the sound of our voice. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known. Those that are praying at home right now, Lord, we ask you that you bless each and every request. Remember those that have already been stated. We ask you, Lord, that you bless men and women and children everywhere. Bless the body of Christ. Remember the leaders and remember, Lord, the Bible study on tonight. That something be said or done to inspire and encourage our hearts. Father, we thank you. We ask you, Lord, that you grant your servant the door of utterance in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, welcome to another broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, where I'm the lead pastor here, Suffolk and Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. And we certainly do thank our First Lady, Lady Tracy Quinn. Um, we thank God for her. Um, and our, our marriage uh, will be 30 years in, uh, coming up on September 1st. Uh, so let us give a shout out to her <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm not always the easiest person to live with, but I thank God that she puts up with me. And we also, too, want to uh, thank God for our leadership here at Christian Ministries, where we are a, a caring fellowship leading souls to Christ, strengthening members and families, making disciples, and equipping them for service and community ministry. That's our vision and our purpose, our purpose, the reason why Christian ministries exist so that we can promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective, responsible ministry and through intentional, creative, dynamic fellowship. And we have our core values. We value patience, we value love, commitment, persistence, we value commitment, sacrifice, and service, and we also value one another. So we certainly do thank God for uh, those core values and our principles that drive us, that keep us connected, and it would not have been possible without the Lord on our side. Uh, <laughs> I'm reminded of, I want to sing a song, well, not a song necessarily, but if it had not been, amen, for the Lord on our side, where would we be? So, amen. So, I want to invite your attention. I want to invite your attention to the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians, uh, chapter number four. The book of Galatians, chapter number four. And as you're turning there with me, I hope you have your Bible in hand and also share this particular. Uh, Bible session, uh, put hit the word share there and share it with other people because it'll be a blessing to their soul. I believe God and I believe and I trust in him that, that he'll send us a word that will encourage and inspire our hearts. Um, and as you're turning there, the book of Galatians, um, Galatians uh, was a, a church that Paul established in Galatia. And um, Paul did this, I believe it was on his second missionary journey uh, that he uh, established a particular church. And this church uh, had grew and um, Paul had uh, put in them doctrines and principles of Christ, turning them from darkness to light, to, from the power of Satan unto God. And uh, they were uh, Gentiles because Paul was sent to the Gentiles, to the heathens. And um, uh, Paul put the word in them, but something happened along the way that they begin to turn, they begin to be influenced by uh, Judaizers and false teachers, wherein um, they were um, not walking out in the principles of God, but they were, uh, in essence, uh, backsliding. They were turning away from the things that be of God. And Paul wrote this strong letter to them, uh, to encourage them to get back on course, to get back on, tr uh, on track. Paul's focus in this letter was the gospel. He focused a lot on the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he also dealt with their faith, and he dealt uh, with their lifestyle. He talked about you, you, their faith, and he talked about their lifestyle, what an individual produces um, in their life uh, will show forth a great means of how they live. In other words, how an individual lives 
is contingent upon their faith. And it goes hand in hand. Faith without works is dead. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So Paul wanted to reestablish, realign this particular church. And uh, in it, uh, that brings us to chapter number four. Chapter number four. And it's a very strong principle that um, I want to share with you as it relates to the body of Christ. Paul says in the book of Galatians, chapter number four, he says, uh, my little children, verse 19, I'm sorry, um, Galatians 4 and 19, he says, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. And that's what I want to talk about tonight uh, from that uh, particular uh, slot of scripture there. I want to talk about laboring until Christ be formed in you. Laboring until Christ be formed in you. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Laboring until Christ be formed in you. And uh, as I stated earlier, just bears, it bears importance to repeat again that these were believers that Paul had wrote uh, this particular epistle, the, the Galatian epistle. They were believers, but they were uh, falling by the wayside. They were backsliding in essence. And uh, Paul uh, was, is trying to encourage them that, that Christ needs to be formed in you. In order to, for an individual believer to endure, to an individual believer to move forward in God, to mature, to grow, Christ has to be formed in them. And that formation is a process. It's a process. So today, I want to talk about that particular process and give you uh, uh, five principles uh, for which to uh, make that happen. Five principles for you to focus on uh, so Christ can be formed in you. It's very important. Amen? Hallelujah. So um, I want to get started. But um, talking about Christ being formed in you, that word form deals with transformation. It deals with a process uh, to be formed. When you form something, that means you actually take it through a process to bring it to flourishing or to bring it into existence. Um, uh, I want you to go with me over to the book of, of Genesis. Uh, the book of Genesis, chapter number one. The book of Genesis chapter number one. And um, I want you to drop down with me to verse 26. Genesis chapter number one and verse 26. I, I hope, I trust that you have your Bible with you so that you can follow along with me in the scriptures. Um, I'm gonna be like Paul, I command you in the name of Jesus, amen. Get your Bible, uh, hallelujah, so you can follow along in the scriptures with me. Um, um, Genesis chapter number one and verse 26. And remember, our, our subject tonight is labor until Christ be formed in you. Notice the scripture says, uh, verse 26, and God said, let us make man. God is declaring a thing. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing and that, uh, that creepeth upon the earth. So God is declaring a thing here. Anytime God wants to bring anything into existence, he declares and decrees. So he's declaring and decreeing, let us make man 
in our image and in our likeness. And, I've, and there's various studies on, on who he was talking to here, but uh, we can say he's talking to the Holy Ghost, uh, Christ, and himself. So we see here, and in, in the three are one, uh, operate in one purpose and in one calling. So we see here, he says, uh, so verse 27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he, notice, male and female created he them. So God is declaring, he's declaring here, and he's saying, uh, let us make man. He's declaring his word. Uh, the scripture says, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, and by faith, God created the world. As he spoke things into existence, things came into existence. So God is declaring and decreeing, let us make man in our image and, and our likeness. Now notice then, um, go with me then down, drop, drop down with me to uh, verse, uh, actually uh, verse chapter 2 and in Genesis chapter 2 and just drop down with me to verse number 7. So after God had, had declared it and decreed it, verse number 7 said, notice, and the Lord God made man of the dust of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul man became a living soul so so what i'm saying here is that god he uh, declared that he was going to make man in, in his image and in his likeness and then he created man uh, designed him that he should be male and female uh, and male and female he created he them he 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 declared them then he designed them and then notice that 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 in, that, in, in Genesis chapter number two and verse number seven notice he formed them from the dust of the earth in other words he made them so the reason why we go there is because uh, to form something has to be uh, come out of a process. And it first has to be in one's heart. It has to be in one's mind. And it has to be spoken into existence. And then it has to be go through a process to be formed. And that's what Paul is saying. I travail in birth again till Christ be formed in you. And the image of God, I just want you to go with me uh, to the book of Hebrews, chapter number one. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter number one, just laying a, a solid foundation here so to give us what we need to move forward. Uh, Hebrews chapter number one and verse number one, it says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, who he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he hath made the worlds, who being, now here, verse number three, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of, of his person. Jesus Christ is the spiritual express image of, of, of God. He's the, he vis, the, the spiritual express image of God. Notice, who being the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Hallelujah. So, so uh, here we see that the image of God is Jesus Christ. Amen. The image of God or the express image of God is Jesus Christ. 
So therefore, what Paul was saying, uh, I travail in birth till Christ be formed in you. In other words, God wants us to literally change. He wants us to literally change into the image of Jesus Christ, be formed into the image of Jesus Christ. He wants us to just to change and make us like Jesus. He wants us to be little Jesuses, uh, spiritually speaking, down here in this world, on this earth. And in order to do that, in order for you to be uh, like Jesus, you literally have to take on or early understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ literally gives you what you need to be like him, to be like Jesus. If I were to ask you uh, right now, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? A lot of people would give us the very simplistic answer and said it contains the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And you would be absolutely right. But there is a deeper, deeper knowledge, a deeper understanding that relates to that gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, it talks to us about Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. And those things bring about power. If an individual believes in those, uh, uh, Jesus' is, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, they can be saved because that, that, those are the essence or the ingredients of salvation. But notice what Paul said in the book of Hebrews chapter number uh, 6. Hebrews chapter number 6. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter number 6. And uh, just drop down with me to verse number 1. Hebrews 6 and, 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 and 1. He says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. This uh, and this will we do if God permit. Now, what Paul was saying there is, okay, we understand that the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the basic rudimentary elements of it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And it talks about his ascension, and it talks about us attaining eternal life. And, and when we believe on those things, we can be saved. Hallelujah. So, so, but, but there's a deeper and a greater understanding of the gospel. If you open up your mind, you can uh, receive a greater power. You can receive greater authority from it to cause you to grow and to mature. In other words, just don't get stuck uh, in the death, burial, and resurrection, which is glorious, which is powerful. But move on in your understanding of how much influence and how much uh, grace and mercy that, 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 that gospel has. It'd be like uh, you having a, a Ferrari, uh, you just uh, sitting in it in your driveway and never really engaging it, getting into it and driving it on the highway. Uh, it's like you, 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 you having a, a million dollars in the bank and you never tap into the fullness of it. You're leaving a lot on the table. Uh, that's what I believe with a lot of, 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 of people who are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe sometimes we live beneath our privileges, wherein God wants you to open up that throttle. Hallelujah. God wants you to move and, and try him and, and really put to, te put to the test that which he has given you. The scripture says that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When, when the power of God comes upon you, you have received the power of God to do great exploits, to do great things. 
Uh, and sometimes I think that uh, there's a lot of things that, that, that hinder us uh, in our own minds and we struggle with it sometimes. Uh, uh, fear and um, a whole lot of things. I could name a whole lot of things. Your past, uh, low self-esteem, uh, a bunch of things. The enemy, the devil, they, that stops us from really advancing and moving in the things that be of God. But God has better things of you. That's what Paul said in that uh, book of Hebrews chapter 6. But we are expecting better things. Hallelujah. God wants to do great and mighty things in your life. And those great and mighty things hinge upon you truly understanding and unlocking the gospel of Jesus Christ. It hinges. Everything hinges upon Jesus. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. Hallelujah. So when we focus in on what is that uh, gospel of Jesus Christ, what is the deeper depths of it? What is the, the, the greater power in it? When we begin to understand these things, we will then be transformed uh, into Christ. We would be Christ-like when we truly understand the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the elements are of what is in it. So I want to uh, just go briefly into that uh, before I give you those five keys in, in order to be transformed. But, you've, but I've got to give you some surface information about the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When the Lord started to open up my mind and to show me these things, it literally, it literally has transformed my life. I'm not telling you something that has not influenced me. Thank you, Lord. And I thank God. Hallelujah for the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it makes me look and see things differently uh, as, as we begin this process of, of, of being not conformed, but being transformed by the renewing of our minds. So we see here then, um, if you go with me to the book of Romans, the book of Romans chapter number one. And this is what Paul says. My God, this is what Paul says. Romans chapter, Romans chapter number one, very familiar passage of scripture, verse 16. Notice what he says. He says, for I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Notice, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen? Now notice what he's saying. Let's take a couple words there. He talked about uh, salvation. The gospel deals with salvation, which means deliverance. And that deliverance is from the power of sin, the penalty of sin, and we soon are going to be delivered even from the very presence of sin. So when an individual has, has, has grasped hold of the gospel and realized that it, that, that it equates to salvation, that equates to deliverance. Thank you, Lord, that an individual um, ha has been, through the power of the gospel, been delivered. And that word power there, it literally means dudamus, which, which means uh, power in action to set one free. In other words, uh, if you would see a, a, a wind, a, a hurricane blowing, and uh, you know that hurricane has power by the damage that it does, by the objects that it picks up. By, by the, the physical manifestation of, of, of that wind. And same way with the gospel. The gospel should have a physical manifestation in your life. It should change your life. If many men be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And there should be a physical manifestation of this power in your life. In other words, the places I used to go, I don't go no more. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. But it also should manifest those things which uh, uh, that you uh, were afraid to do in righteousness, in holiness. You have the power because you've been delivered by the gospel to do. In other words, if you were a whoremonger, now you got power to stop whoremongering. And, and there should be a physical manifestation. If you were a liar, now you have received power or deliverance to stop lying. That's, that's, that's the manifestation of, of what the gospel has. And also, too, to take it to a deeper level, whatever God has commissioned you to do concerning his will and his desires, you have power to accomplish it. You have power to wage warfare in the kingdom of God. And that comes through that word salvation. And not only that, it, it also has a connotation of a word that called, says preservation, to be preserved. Amen. The gospel preserves you. And that, and that what it means there by being preserved means that, that things bounce off of you. Uh, when well, those things that are evil, those things that are unjust, those things that are wicked, when the enemy comes up against you like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against you. So those things don't penetrate you uh, because you, you, are e you are equipped with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're preserved. Uh, the storms of life. Hallelujah, my God. The, they may be raging outside, but you don't, you, they don't affect you so that you fall by the wayside. There was a, a challenge on Facebook earlier uh, last week wherein people would put up their age. And, and when they put up their age, they're trying to say that I don't, my, my age, the way I look, I look younger than, than my age. That's, that means they have been preserved. Amen. I've seen people that are even my age and I and I look at them and they look old and they look decrepit. They look stormed and weather beaten. Why? Because they they have not been preserved. Hallelujah. And this is what the gospel does. It preserves you. It keeps you. It guards your heart. It guards your mind. The, the, the fiery darts of the wicked one can't penetrate you. Why? Because you have on that whole armor. You take the shield of faith. And that's connected to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then uh, uh, we got to be understand also uh, the gospel is also a legal document that justifies you in a righteous way. Uh, what I mean by that is, is that, is that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God judged us through Jesus Christ. He's the one that died on the cross for our sins. And, and because uh, uh, we've been judged in Christ, when we receive Christ, Hallelujah, we're crucified with him. We've been uh, prejudged, if you allow me to say it, in Christ Jesus to walk in the newness of life. So, the, uh, so when the enemy comes up to try to condemn us, the scripture says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So, so uh, 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 our evil deeds and our evil actions have been handled in Christ Jesus. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. When you understand that you, when you accept the gospel, that's your legal document to say eyes are free, hallelujah, that my sins have been judged, hallelujah, and through Jesus Christ, he's the one that's been wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace have been laid upon him and with his stripes I am healed, I am delivered. 
Hallelujah. So when you understand these things and be able to comprehend with these things, you know that you've been uh, uh, found not guilty, not guilty of your sins. And then there's another uh, manifestation of this word gospel. It, it deals with, it deals with uh, also justification. And means that word justification just simply means that you've been declared righteous in the sight of God. You're righteous. That gospel has declared you righteous, just if you have never sinned. And I've just got to, I got to move on here. And 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 you've been uh, justified, uh, 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 just as you have never sinned, and you've been sanctified, set apart. This gospel sets you apart to live holy, to be righteous. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, my God. So it's a lot in this. And, and, and uh, you will also, uh, not only will you be glorified when you leave this earth, but you should walk in a glorified state right now, down here in this earth, realizing that the glory of God, it rests upon you. Uh, and then also this gospel, it, it carries the grace of God because of God's grace. God can extend his mercy so then God, so that you can be at peace with God. Because enmity, we in the flesh, when we were sinners, we were enmity against God. Uh, we, we did those things that, that, that were wicked and God was angry with us. But because of the gospel and because of the power that is in the gospel, God can extend his grace to us. And because he extends his grace to us, he can extend his mercy to us. And because he extends his mercy to us, we can be at peace with God. Shalom. And that word peace God can deal with us in a peaceful type of way so that he can provide everything we need concerning life and godliness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So those are, I want you to, I want you to study those words that, I, that I've given you. Uh, salvation, preservation, judgment, sanctification, justification, glorification, and grace, mercy, and peace. If you, you need to equate those words into the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because uh, through that gospel, God has executed uh, his judgment. And that, that execution of God's judgment has a penalty phase to it. And Jesus paid that penalty phase that goes along with God's judgment. And the, that, that word judgment also has a promissory phase to it. That, that is God, it's not God's will that any man should perish. That, that, that you should be holy. That, that you've been bought with a price. That now you can obtain eternal life. So it has a, it has a swinging door, hallelujah, so to speak to it. That we have to understand that the, the, when we come to the judgment of God. Judge God judged sin on the cross. And part of his execution of that judgment, he declared everyone free, hallelujah, who accepts Jesus Christ. And he thereby gives them power, hallelujah, to live a holy and a saved life, to be the children of God. Now, beloved, are ye the sons of God, hallelujah. Now are you the children of God. And I, and I hope that you can understand my language and, and understand uh, what I'm saying here when we're talking about that power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's necessary for an individual to understand that so that Christ can be formed in them. Because the, the enemy the, and, and that which is in us can, can attack us to, to make us live beneath our privileges, uh, 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 not really test this gospel, not really utilize it in such a way wherein we release the power and authority that comes along with it. God wants you to release the power and the authority that he has placed, hallelujah, in you through the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. You ought to give God a praise. Hallelujah. So now I want to talk about uh, for this next 20 minutes, I want to talk about uh, the five the five steps that the Lord has shown me uh, has has uh, uh, so us so we can uh, develop that 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 Christ in you. Remember, uh, Paul was dealing with these saints. <laughs> well, no, Lord forgive me. I said with these saints, but but you know sometimes people are hard headed. Uh, pastors uh, sometimes you got uh, sheep in your in your congregation, but sometimes you got some goats. Amen. And uh, you you hoping, Lord, one day that they'll turn into a sheep. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But but when you're dealing with people, uh, your people can be rough sometimes, and not always they buck up against stuff. They 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 they, they have a hard time with submitting, and there's reasons for that. Uh, but Paul was was on this particular church because he loved the people that he wanted them to uh, uh, have Christ formed in them completely. What well, Paul was saying, my little children, for whom I again in pain and labor, uh, 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 with labor pains and labor, I'm laboring with you until Christ be completely and permanently formed in you. Paul wanted Paul wanted them to have Jesus and Jesus alone till, till they be like Christ, so they walk like Christ and talk like Christ so that they would be able to mature to a place wherein uh, if they were to move away from the particular church that they wouldn't give up, that they wouldn't throw in the towel, that they wouldn't be uh, persuaded by every wind of doctrine. It's like this. It's like a, a child, parents raise their children and you, you grow your children, you put values in them, you put information in them, you give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But you don't, uh, uh, and, and when, they, when they grow up, they can leave and go to another city and still prosper and still survive by what you have put in them. They have, if you allow me to say it this way, they have your mind. They have your wisdom. They have your knowledge and understanding because you formed it in them. You put it in them so that there are no more children to be tossed to and fro, but they're adults being able to stand. That's what God wants from us. God, God wants us to be able to grow and stand and advance his kingdom. Hallelujah. And then, uh, you know, you got some children that that hang around the house all the time that 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 don't want to grow. They can't grasp the principles uh, to be able to be mature and move out and 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 sustain a life. Hallelujah. And and you still work with them. You don't uh, uh, necessarily boot them out. Uh, but you work with them. You you try to build them up and try to encourage them all with the expectation that you want their, your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be formed in their hearts, to be formed in their mind. And that takes a process. It takes, it takes work. Hallelujah. They have to matriculate through some various stages in order for that to happen. So that's what we want to talk about now. The key stages. What, what we have to look to in order to have Christ formed in us. And it takes labor. It takes work. Amen. Uh, you can't have this mind, the mind of Christ, uh, or, or Christ be formed in you without work. It takes work. It just You don't just wake up overnight and Christ is in you, formed in you, the way Paul is talking here. Thank you, Lord. It takes study and knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you have to practice that word. So the first thing, the key is, is the key of transformation. Write that down. You have to literally transform. Amen. And as in the book of Romans, chapter number 12. And I'm going to go through this very quickly. I got a tendency, if you haven't noticed, to be 
kind of long-winded. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. But I don't want to be long-winded on tonight. I want you to get this. The first thing you have to do to get the, the Christ formed in you. huh? Notice Paul said, I labor. I travail. It takes labor. It takes travail. Uh, what he's literally saying, actually, what Paul is literally saying is that I need you to be born again, again. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's like uh, uh, Paul is equating this to a woman giving birth to the same child again. Who wants to do that? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's like a woman giving birth to the same child twice. Thank you. Not having twins, but giving birth to the same child twice. Being born again, again. Because they had got caught up. They got caught up with, with the, uh, the uh, false doctrine and, and, and evil spirits. They allowed people to seduce them and to bewitch them. Don't allow people to seduce you and to bewitch you. And it's, and it's a known fact that people fall by the wayside. They backslide in churches. And it doesn't matter if you're the pastor, the usher, the, 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 the Sunday school teacher, or the musician. Everybody is subject to backslide if they don't get the formation of Christ in them. Hallelujah. And, 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 it's, and it's important for us to know these things. Uh, amen. It's important for us to be equated with these things. And one other, one other thing. Paul was, Paul was saying to them that you're in danger. You're in danger when you uh, play with the world and don't, and don't get serious about your walk with the Lord. Uh, you're in danger if you're playing close to the edge. Uh, you're in danger if you don't do the things that are necessary to build yourself up. Uh, Paul said, Paul has said this in the book of, I just got to go here, uh, being led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Y'all got to go with me. Uh, uh, back over here to Hebrews chapter number 6. And like I said, get your Bible and follow along with me. Hebrews chapter number 6 and uh, verse Verse, uh, jump down to uh, verse number six. And this is the danger. And, and this has been a lot of controversy over this scripture I'm about to read. But let, let, let God's word be true and every man a liar. Notice what it says. He says, for if they, uh, notice. Well, we start with verse number five. Well, we'll start, I'm sorry. Let's start with verse number four. He says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away, that word fall away means backslide. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and, and put them and put him uh, to an open shame. So what Paul is saying there is, you know, like I said, there's a lot of controversy with that scripture, but but it's talking about people who don't go to maturity. People, he, he's, he's giving them a warning and letting them know that you can backslide if you don't go to maturity. You can live in an apostate state thinking you're all right when you're all wrong if you don't apply the gospel of Jesus Christ in your life. If you don't build yourself up on your most holy faith. Are we saved by works? No, we're saved by grace and that through faith. But you have to do some things in order to uh, keep your salvation. Uh, my God, you have to do some things. Thank you, Lord, to uh, 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 grow. You have to mature. You can't just uh, allow uh, yourself to be carnal and think that uh, the enemy is not going to attack you. Uh, and you can't just be 
Uh, a person that is floating around like a butterfly think things that are all right when they're all wrong. That doesn't work that way. Also, notice the scripture. He said, when a person is swept and clean, when a person is swept and clean, Jesus brought this out, and he says, uh, and the devil has gone out of the individual. So they're saved. And notice, he said, uh, uh, the devil comes back uh, with seven more seeking. If they're not to, if they if that person hasn't built themselves up, got themselves into a place where they need to be, the enemy will come in, uh, and they'll be seven times worse. You can't afford that. If, you, if Pastor Quinn trying to exhort you and scare you, yes, I want you to understand the what what the consequences are. If you don't go after these things that we're talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you. So I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see here then. The first thing you need to do is uh, the key is to is transformation. It's transformation. And let us look at um, Romans chapter number 12. Talking about how do I Christ be formed in me. You've got to labor into it. You've got to work into Christ being formed in you. And notice what he says. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So you have to stay in the presence of God. Amen. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Notice, he said, be not conformed to this world. So you got to stop uh, acting like the world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be renewed that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now notice, verse number three. For I say, by, through the grace given unto me to, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly, according as God has dealt with uh, to every man the measure of faith. So, so don't think in your own mind that you don't have to present your body as a living sacrifice. That you don't have to be uh, uh, transformed. Uh, don't think that you don't. Amen. But you've got to think soberly. And that means don't be drunk with the world and like the world. Don't, don't allow yourself to be deceived. Amen. So, so you have to go through a process of transforming your mind. How do you transform your mind? By daily reading the scriptures. Hallelujah. By daily meditating on the scriptures, by daily prayer, by, by uh, uh, a periodical fasting and prayer. Amen. And, and then notice the second point that I want to bring out is, it, it's, is dealing with you've got to separate yourself from living in the flesh and walking in the spirit. You literally got to separate yourself. If you want to be transformed, you've got to separate yourself from the flesh and walk in the spirit. Uh, the Bible tells us that we're, 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 we're spirit, soul, and body. Um, when Adam uh, sinned and Eve sinned, we became body, soul, and spirit. The order got mixed up. Our, our, our body was leading us, amen, and with the spirit hanging behind. But when Christ reconciled us, we became spirit, amen, soul and body. Now we are led by the spirit, amen, hallelujah. So we've got to allow the spirit of God to lead us and to guide us, not our body or our flesh, in fact, you've got to subdue your body and your flesh to bring it into subjection to your spirit. To what spirit? The Holy Spirit. Amen? So notice, that's why he talks about that power. 
you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That power uh, represents their authority, hallelujah, and that dunamis power to be able to operate and manifest the power that is in you. How do you, how do you know a car has, has super power in it? You rev up that engine, room, room, and that's, and that's, and that's, you know, you hear that power, but the, the actual power isn't released until you put it in gear and then you move out. Then you'll see the power. Hallelujah. And that's what people ought to do. They, be, they should be able to see the power of God operating in your life. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible means when it says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. People got to be able to see your good works that they will not glorify you, but glorify the power source, huh? which is your father, which is in heaven. So we see here then, um, go to Galatians, uh, then chapter number five. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor Quinn. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Galatians chapter number five. And uh, I just want to, uh, I want you to focus on uh, uh, five verses 16 all the way down to the end of that chapter. But I just want to read one particular verse. And that's, uh, then that's uh, 16. Uh, the second point, remember the second, this is the second point. Separating uh, from living in the flesh to live in the spirit. Amen. If you want Christ to be formed in you, you got to separate from living in the flesh to live in the spirit. So notice uh, chapter number five, verse 16 says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the evil desires of the flesh and then uh, he names uh, the works of the flesh in here and then he names the works of the, the or the fruit of the spirit uh, further down but I, I don't have time to go into all of those but but you have to recognize my friend that that if you uh, want Christ to be formed in you you cannot fulfill the lust and the desires of your flesh. You have to go deeper, deeper, and bring your evil desires under subjection. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to. Thank you, Lord. You, what would it look like if Jesus was uh, running around chasing women? You'd be like, Jesus, what you doing? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. What would it look like? If Jesus was around cussing, smoking, and lying, he would say, no, that ain't Jesus. That'll hurt you to your heart. Now, if your heart condemn you, God is greater than your heart. If you, uh, being evil, know that good is right, how much more? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Should your heavenly Father desire to do for you to do what's right? And he knows you have the capability to do what's right because he gave it to you. He knows that you have a, a, a strength to do what's right because he gave you the strength when he gave you the Holy Ghost. Those that don't have the Holy Ghost, all you need to do is to repent and ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And, and believe that Jesus is the Christ. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he will give you the Holy Ghost. He will give you that power. Why? Because he wants you to be like him. He's not going to withhold any good thing from you. Don't allow the enemy think to uh, have it in your mind that you've got to climb a mountain, that you've got to roll and, 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 and do something stupid and crazy, that you've got to do some miraculous things. All you got to do is repent and desire to be like him. And he will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So our second, our second one, or our third one is, is um, you got to be able to grow in grace. Amen. And what I mean by that is, 
uh, grow in grace. Um, go with me over to the book of Acts. Jesus grew in grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The book of Acts, chapter number four. And this is uh, what we preached on last Sunday uh, about when Peter and John, they uh, uh, healed that lame man by faith that was in Jesus Christ. See, when you walk in by that faith that's in Jesus Christ, you can do miraculous things because, because of the authority and the power that is in Jesus. When Jesus died, that wasn't the end of the story. But when he got up, hallelujah, from death, he got up with all power, amen, all authority. I thank you, Lord. It's been given unto him. And he transfers that power and authority to us when we use his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And there's no other name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved other than through Jesus. And you can do great exploits only by trusting in Jesus. Now, what I mean by following after or growing in grace um, um, the book of Acts, chapter number uh, 4, and just drop down with me to verse 33. And notice what it says. It says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Great grace was was upon them all. When they were doing what was necessary for the, uh, the kingdom of the Lord, the grace of God came upon them and gave them strength. In other words, uh, a lot of people may pray at the altar, say, Lord, I want your power. I want your anointing. I want, I want your glory. Lord, let your grace rest upon me. And, and when they get up from the prayer, uh, they go and sit down. They don't do nothing. Why should God fill you with great power and great grace if you're not going to do anything with it? Notice the apostles. They received the grace because they were witnessing of the resurrection of Jesus. And the grace of God was, had empowered them to do so. So if you want the mind of Christ or you want the, the uh, Christ to be formed in you, you've got to do some things um, that are necessary for the grace of God to rest upon you. If you desire in your heart, Lord, because I want Christ to be formed in me, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to steal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read my word. The grace of God will overshadow you to give you power to do such. Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. But you got to tap into it. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. You got to tap into it by your actions. Amen. Hallelujah. My God in heaven. Now notice then. Notice. Thank you, Lord. So you got to grow in that grace. Grow in grace. Grow in grace by, by doing the things that are necessary. Amen. By, 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 by transforming yourself. Uh, by, 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 by separating yourself from, from, from uh, not allowing your flesh to lead you, but being led by the Spirit. If you desire to be led by the Spirit, great grace will come upon you. Amen? Great power will come upon you. Amen? Hallelujah. If you, if you desire to, to do the will of God, the great grace will come upon you to empower you to do it. Because the reason, one of the reasons why that happens is God wants you to do it, but God doesn't want you to be strong in your own might. He wants you to be strong in him and in the power of his might because he wants the glory of oh my God. Hallelujah. He wants the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so, so the next one. The next one. Amen. So you got you to follow after the Spirit. Now, you also have to develop the mind of Christ. Uh, Philippians. Philippians. We're almost done. Y'all bear with me. Philippians 
uh, chapter number two. Amen. Philippians chapter number two. And uh, verse number five. What does it say? Uh, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, so you have to develop the mind of Christ. And how do you develop the mind of Christ? Notice I said everything comes through the gospel. The gospel represents the mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you study that word, apply that word uh, in your heart, you can develop the mind of Christ. You'll think like he thinks. Amen. You'll talk like he talks. And then in Romans, it talks about uh, having, having the, the spirit of Christ. And that word spirit there of Christ, it's talking about his attitude. Uh, uh, his, his attitude on how he felt about the things that be of God. Amen. You've got to have that same attitude that Jesus has. Amen. About the things that be of God. Hallelujah. you got to love righteousness and hate iniquity. you got to love mercy and hate injustice. You've got to come to a point where you say, by any means necessary, I've got to do the will of God. Uh, I'm going to lay down my flesh. I'm going to be the servant of God, my God. I'm going to do those things which please my Father. Uh, that, that's, that was the spirit of Christ. And then when, when evil and injustice came upon Jesus, and, and sometimes he would look at the people that were trying to come against him, and, and he would let them know in their face what God's will desires. When it came down to sin, he didn't play with sin, even with Peter. Uh, when Peter was trying to uh, say that, Lord, you're not going to go to the cross. Anytime somebody trying to stop you from your steadfastness with God and the plan of God, Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Uh, for thou don't savor the things that be of God. Amen. So never, never compromise with, 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 with the plan and the purpose of God. I look at it like this. You know, I can play around with my children. I can play around with anybody. But as soon as they cross a line, you know, you get serious with them. You give them that stupid look. Like, what you talking about? What you doing? <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Why? Because you don't want nothing to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because this thing is too precious. Hallelujah. I can't lose out for some uh, fleeting moments of pleasure. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't give up my hope because my hope is all that I have. Now I'm getting into my preaching mode. <laughs> hey, glory. Hallelujah. But this thing is too precious. How many of you know that this thing is too precious? It get gooder and gooder. Thank you, Lord. My God. So we see here then, the last point I want to bring up, um, you got to uh, uh, develop that mind, that mind of Christ. And you've got to follow after the Spirit. And, and when, when Paul was talking, he was telling them that, that our subject tonight was uh, uh, Christ be formed in you. Labor until Christ be formed in you. And the, it hinges upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. In order for God, because God wants us to change or to be made like Christ. To be more like Jesus. How many of you know that? You know that's true. That God wants you to be more like Jesus. And in order to do that, You've got to understand what this, what, what, what he has done to us and for us through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've got to know that gospel and what it entails. Go deeper than just the death, burial, and resurrection. Know that you've been preserved, that, that, that through it you have sanctification, that you've been justified. Amen? That, that you've been freed, that through it you can access grace and mercy uh, and peace with God. 
Hallelujah. And that with it, you can wage a warfare. It's, it's all about Jesus. Amen. And the more you know about that, the, the, you'll have the ability for Christ to be formed in you. You'll walk around just like a little Jesus. And, and, and Paul, what Paul was saying was, is that he wanted them to be born again, again. Amen? Because they had lost out on their first works. They had, they had backslidden. Amen? And we don't want to backslide. He, the Lord has been too good to us. And you don't want to be deceived. Amen? The enemy, he, he deceives. He tricks. And you don't want to be tricked. And you don't want to be deceived. So uh, I hope you got something out of the Bible study on tonight. And we certainly do thank God for this word, amen, that he has given unto us. And I thank God for you spending time with me on tonight to, to receive the word of the Lord. And I want to uh, just speak to um, uh, our members and, and, and the community that uh, uh, I know that they're going to be opening up to 25 uh, on, what is it, the 8th, tomorrow, or on whatever, uh, the 8th, that's Friday, I believe, day 6. Uh, so, but what I'm saying is, is uh, we won't fully open up our doors uh, on uh, Sunday. Uh, we'll still continue our same mode uh, because, you know, we want people to be safe, and I want you to be uh, not only saved, but I want you to be safe. Uh, but generally speaking, um, uh, for the Bible study, uh, we will allow that to happen. Those that want to come to Bible study on next Wednesday, you can come. Uh, but be prepared uh, to distance yourself. Uh, come with your mask. Come with your Bible. Amen. Uh, be prepared to wash your hands. Put the hand sanitizer on. And uh, be safe. So uh, we will uh, open the church up for Bible study. We'll open it up slow, uh, open it up for Bible study. Let's get into the practice of so, uh, socially distancing ourselves and moving forward like that. I'll still uh, do Bible study online as well as we're doing uh, tonight. Uh, but I, I just wanted to put that announcement out uh, and let you know that uh, on Wednesdays, um, that number can come to the church for Bible study. But we're still going to be on lockdown for our Sunday morning worship uh, because generally speaking, a lot more people come at that particular time. And um, uh, I just want, I want everybody to be safe. Um, so uh, put that in your, uh, in your mind and in your spirit and let us uh, uh, come together. Let us pray. Let us pray that um, this season will come to an end, that uh, we'll be able to come together and worship together as, as we have in the past. But not only that, but a, with, a greater, with a greater appreciation of God, with a greater, greater understanding of what we have. Uh, oftentimes, uh, when, if you got to, you got to wash the dishes after somebody uh, and the family has eaten. You may think that that's a chore. But uh, if you were dealing with a, a sick child that, that was hungry and, um, but can't eat, but then you give them that plate full of food and somehow they do eat it, you look at that plate and say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that the child ate because they were sick and now they're they're, they're getting what they need. You'll be so happy to see that plate empty. And oftentimes, that's where we are. You know, let us, let us appreciate. Let us appreciate fellowship. Let us appreciate what we have in God. You don't miss your water till your well run dry. And let us come to the Lord with a greater fervency and a greater appreciation. Let us live out. Let us live out. What, what God has intended for us. Uh, let us not be uh, weary in well-doing. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen.
I love you all, and I hope you all love me, and we'll get through this together. I need you, you need me, and we need one another. And more than that, we need God. <laughs> we need God. Hallelujah. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I really do. Amen. I really do. And I hope that you would apply this Bible study to your heart, to your, to your mind, your spirit, and your soul. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you. We thank and praise you, Lord, for this Bible study on tonight. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and other, every soul under the sound of my voice. We ask you, Lord, that you let this word penetrate our hearts and that we travail until Christ be formed in us, that we'll see the benefit and the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we'll be transformed, that we'll uh, stay away from fleshly and evil things and be led by our spirit, that we'll develop the mind of Christ and the spirit of Christ. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Remember those that are sick and afflicted. Remember those that need help. Hallelujah. Lord, help us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And we'll see you. Uh, tune in at 11 o'clock. We'll still, on Sunday, we'll have our praise team. We'll worship the Lord. And we'll bring forth the word of God. Also, too, uh, let us get on our prayer line uh, on tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Amen. So we thank God for you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. In Jesus Christ, he is Lord.